Now we've come to the third special section of the Musaf service, Shofarot. The mitzvah for us as a congregation is to both blow the shofar, and we have some very talented players, but also, more importantly, to hear it, to listen to it, and to act upon its call in both a personal and a communal response. It's not meant to be a passive experience. For me, and perhaps for you too, the shofar blowing is the most visceral and stirring part of the service. I close my eyes and take hold of the sound, riding on the notes, feeling them vibrate through me. Sometimes I actually find myself going up on my toes or bending my knees as the notes rise and fall. The shofar is that most ancient of sounds, raw, primitive, and powerful. The sound of our memory, our history, heard in the big biblical moments, the revelation at Sinai, the liberation of the Jubilee year, the promised gathering of all of our exiles. But it also sounds our plaintive pleas, the teruah and the shavarim, and the annual promise of personal growth and renewal as it announces the opportunity for teshuvah. The shofar blast bridges momentous events and quiet reflection, the political and the personal, the then and the now, our history and our present. For the past several years, I've been thinking about that bridge, the connection between history and understanding of events in the past, and the resonance of that history, its meaning, its lesson for our own time. I've had the privilege of chronicling a liberation movement in our nation's history when American women of all races and religions, all classes and occupations, raised their voice to demand the rights as citizens. They demanded the right to vote. It was called the women's suffrage movement. And it's fascinating that the word suffrage originally meant in Latin and Old French, a prayer. It evolved into meaning a voice and then developed to mean a voice in community affairs, a vote. The suffrage movement was both a major civil rights and a social reform struggle, a challenging of the status quo of women's rights and roles in society. The suffragists worked for more than seven decades to change hearts and minds. They had to awaken the conscience of America and rally women to action. To sound this call, they used the modern version of the shofar, the horn, Horns are everywhere in suffrage images, announcing rallies, leading marches, grabbing the attention of audiences to open-air meetings. And like Joshua at Jericho, horns led them into battle. Ultimately, the movement brought about the greatest expansion of voting rights in our nation's history. Just a few weeks ago, we celebrated the centennial anniversary of American women's right to vote. The moment in August 1920 when the 19th Amendment entered the Constitution, a great moment of teshuvah for our democracy. But it was hardly a perfect return to our founding principles of government by and for the people, because the 19th Amendment would be undermined by racist state laws, Jim Crow laws, in Maryland and the other southern states, denying the constitutional promise of the 19th Amendment to black women for another almost half century. And that process of teshuva is still not complete. And the right to vote is in great jeopardy again today. There are alarming teruah blasts of the shofar warning us that our democracy is in peril. It's our responsibility to heed them and to act by working to protect voting rights for all citizens today. In the past few months, our ears have heard an onslaught of distressing sounds Cries of pain and fear as a plague of truly biblical proportions has engulfed the world. Wails of ambulances, sobs of yearning and loss as the pandemic takes its toll. Screams of distress as fire and flood, heat and vicious storms rage as our planet warms. And shouts of protest and pleas for justice in the streets of every city and every town. Think of them all as sounds of the shofar, a call for awakening and for action. Jews everywhere in every generation have listened and are listening to the sound of the shofar today. Tekiah, Shavarim, and Teruah link history to our own time 
and to our own lives. This year especially, may we have the courage to listen and to respond. L'shana tova, tikatevu.